Whether you're new to a vegan diet or just intentionally trying to eat more plant-based food, vegan food can seem intimidating. However, I've been vegan for eight years and I think it's pretty easy. So today I'm gonna to show you three meals that I eat every single week, sometimes multiple times a week, and also some formulas for how I make vegan meals with ease. This video is also sponsored by Thrive Market. Let's get started with breakfast. Technically, I already did make a coffee. That's not my breakfast, but it is an essential part of my day. My current go-to is an Americano with a splash of vegan creamer and a dash of cinnamon. In general, I approach all of my meals with a more intuitive eating mindset. I mostly just try to listen to my body and my cravings and try to eat a balanced meal the majority of the time. So all of my go-to meals have a source of plant-based protein, they have a source of carbohydrates, and they have a source of healthy fats, starting with breakfast. Honestly, my go-to for breakfast is a smoothie. I'm gonna show you the most simple iteration, the one I make most of the time because I've made it for years and I'm still not sick of it. Very simple, just one frozen banana. That's our carbs. And then for protein, I'm going to be using this vegan chocolate protein powder. Uh, one scoop of it has 20 grams of protein, so I know I'm getting a good source of it there. And for my healthy fats, I like to add about a tablespoon of nut butter. Today I'm using peanut butter, but really you can treat this recipe as more of like a base. If you don't like banana, use another frozen fruit. Use a different flavor of protein powder. Use almond butter, tahini, sunflower seed butter instead of peanut butter. It's very easy to switch it up once you have a sort of base formula for your meals. And if you were paying attention, we pretty much have all of our nutritional categories topped off. So that could be your bare minimum. Um, but I like to add a few extra things. I like to add about a tablespoon of ground flaxseed or chia seed to all of my smoothies just for some extra fiber and healthy fats. Also adding a dash of cinnamon because I literally can't get enough of cinnamon. It's just the best. Now I prefer a sweet breakfast, but the easiest way to get some veggies in your breakfast is just to add a handful of spinach to whatever smoothie you're making. If you don't necessarily care about the color, I just feel like this is the easiest way to get some added nutrition into your diet. It blends super smoothly. Even if you don't have a super high quality blender, spinach tends to blend very well, and you can barely taste it because you're adding in a bunch of other flavors. Personally, I don't think you can taste it at all. Last but not least, we need some form of liquid to blend. Personally, I just use water because I feel like the nut butter makes it creamy enough. You could also use a plant-based milk here if you wanted to. I just feel like they've gotten expensive in recent years and I'd rather save my money and use water. Now I'm just going to blend this up, pour it into a glass and breakfast is ready in like two minutes. Does the spinach make it look pretty? No, but you know what? I already got my greens in for the day and it's still the morning. Also, I know this recipe isn't revolutionary. It's pretty simple, but like I said earlier, think of it like a base. And if you still want more inspiration, I'll link a few of my favorite smoothie recipes in the description of this video if you want to check them out. Now that I've got my three beverages, I am ready to start my day. <laughs> Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this video is actually sponsored by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store with a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Personally, I love using Thrive Market because it's incredibly easy to order groceries from the comfort of my pajamas in my house, but they also have so many great filters, so it's very easy for me to filter products based on my lifestyle choices. So for me, very easy to find vegan, gluten-free, organic products. They have so many different search feature options on their website Website, and they have guaranteed savings with every order. I just placed a Thrive Market order and got a restock of some of my favorite pantry items, including this vegan chocolate protein powder that I used in my smoothie, which you guys just saw. Also the flaxseed from my smoothie was from Thrive Market as well. And then I got a random mix of other items like their high quality olive oil, which I always love, some quinoa, organic pumpkin seeds. I always stock up on this low sodium tamari. We use it all the time in any of our Asian dishes. Also got some gluten-free free rice ramen. I needed some more toasted sesame oil and I also got some sesame seeds. I like how they sell their spices in these bags. It's just easy for me to refill the jars that I already have. And last but not least, I did get a free gift with my order. So I'm excited to try these sour peach sour cranberries. Sounds fun. I love cranberries and I love peaches. I love how you can really make Thrive Market work for you and your lifestyle. For me, I live 30 minutes away from the closest grocery store, so it's a lot more convenient for me to deliver things straight to my door. You can also choose to join Thrive Market on a month to month basis for only $12 a month or pay annually and it's only $5 a month. Plus all orders over $49 always ship free on Thrive Market. So if you live in the United States and you want to check out Thrive Market, I have a special offer for you. You can go to thrivemarket.com shoemaker and you'll get 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. So you're already gonna save money, you get additional savings with my order, 
code and you get a free gift. So it's really a win, win, win. So if you're looking to try more vegan products or just want to find more products that are going to fit your diet and lifestyle without having to search five different grocery stores for them, click the link in the description to check Thrive Market out. I've worked with them for years and I honestly love what they do and their mission and it just makes my grocery shopping so easy. Taking the dogs for their daily walk, then I'm going to go inside and make some lunch. I feel like lunch is the hardest meal of the day because a lot of people don't work from home. So you want something that's like easy and transportable. And even for me, I feel like I don't want to have to cook even for like 30 minutes in the middle of the day, it like ruins the momentum of what I want to get done. So honestly, most days for lunch, I reheat leftovers or I make a really filling salad that I can eat throughout the week. So I'm going to show you the second option because Leftovers isn't a very helpful thing. Now, when I say salad, I'm not talking about any lame, soggy iceberg lettuce situation, okay? Actually, there's not even lettuce in today's salad. If I'm good at one thing, I'd like to think I'm better at more than one thing, but if it's only one thing, I think I can make a pretty good salad. And that's because I make salads that are filling, that still fill all of my nutritional requirements. So we're gonna have, like I said earlier, carbs, a source of protein, and some healthy fat. Today I'm going to be making my roasted broccoli quinoa salad. I think this is a really good salad for meal prep because you can serve it cold or warm. And all the ingredients are also super affordable. Like you can get broccoli any time of year and it's roughly gonna be the same price. And as you will see today, it's also very easy to customize because I will not be following my recipe exactly, but I think this is a good example of showing how it's super easy to modify recipes based on what you have in your pantry or based on your own personal likes and dislikes. So we're gonna start by cutting our broccoli and the broccoli stems, no waste here, into bite-sized florets. You want about five-ish cups of broccoli today. I'm just going to be eyeballing it. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm putting it on a baking tray right up here. I'm just using a smaller one. And then we're also going to thinly slice a shallot. Just cut the top off. And it's okay some of the broccoli bits get on it because you know what? It's all going on the same baking tray. I'm just going to thinly slice it into like half rounds. Add this to our baking tray as well. Then we're just going to drizzle this with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Then roast in the oven at 425F for about 18 to 20 minutes until everything is slightly crispy on the edges. In the recipe, I have that you cook the quinoa on the stovetop, but today I'm just going to cook it in my Instant Pot just because honestly, it's a little bit more stress you don't have to wait for the water to boil or anything and it only cooks for one minute in the pressure cooker so you're going to need a cup of quinoa and we're going to rinse it off first and then you need less water in the instant pot it's just a one-to-one -one ratio so after you rinse it off you're just going to add a cup of water and i'm also going to add a tiny pinch of salt rinsing the quinoa helps it taste less bitter but adding a little bit of salt will help too so then i'm just going to seal this and let this cook while my veggies roast and then in the meantime we're going to make our dressing i used to buy store-bought dressing but once i learned how to make my own i honestly just prefer it it's a lot easier to customize to your own personal like taste palette preferences um i also just think it tastes like fresher which makes sense because you're making it on the spot that being said if you want to you could totally buy like an italian or balsamic dressing um, if you just want to make your life easier and then combine it with the quinoa and veggies uh, but today i'm going to show you how to make a really simple this is like my go-to dressing honestly it's like a lemon dijon olive oil vinaigrette so in a small jar you'll add a fourth of a cup of olive oil zest of one lemon technically optional but not optional the juice of one lemon because we need some acid then you'll add a teaspoon of dijon mustard a clove of crushed garlic half a teaspoon of salt and black pepper to taste if you like your dressing sweeter you could also add some maple syrup here too then you're just going to shake it up until the dressing is fully emulsified super easy our broccoli came out of the oven looking delicious and our quinoa is done so now it's just time to assemble I guess theoretically you could do it all in the instant pot if you want one less dish, but we are adding some fresh herbs at the end. So I'm going to transfer it to a bowl. So the environment is just slightly more chilly. Got our quinoa in the bowl. Now we're going to add our roasted veggies. The recipe as written has about 13 grams of protein per serving, which is pretty good. You get it from the quinoa and the nuts and the broccoli. But personally, I want a little bit more in my lunch. I find that it keeps me full longer. So you can serve this as like a side salad. But today I'm just gonna add a can of chickpeas, a super easy way to boost the protein of any recipe, just add a can of beans. Then we're just going to top this off with some parsley, some pumpkin seeds and our dressing and mix it until it's evenly combined. And here we have our finished salad. And the recipe actually calls for 
silver and almonds, but I just use pumpkin seeds today because that's what I had. And I also like how they add a little bit of extra protein and they contribute to this monochromatic green moment we have going on. I like to top my salad off with just a little bit of extra black pepper. This is something that's super easy to meal prep on like a Sunday or at the beginning day before your work week and then just have for an easy lunch. Super easy to store in the fridge. You can heat it up in the microwave on the stovetop or eat it cold and enjoy it as leftovers throughout the rest of the week. If you want more salad recipes like this, I have a ton on my blog, but I'll link this one in the description of this video. I really do love this one. It's super hearty because of the quinoa and the chickpeas that I added and the roasted veggies just make it seem heartier too. Um, but the lemon adds just such like a fresh, bright element and the parsley too. And like, honestly, it's like the lemon, the parsley you can get for a dollar. Broccoli is usually pretty cheap. Quinoa is pretty inexpensive. It's a very like budget friendly, but also filling and hearty meal. I'm gonna go do some like computer work and work before dinner time, but I am going to have a snack of an apple. Honestly, I'm very lazy when it comes to snacks. I just like to have a piece of fruit or a handful of nuts or like some chips when I have them in the house. Um, but today I want something like sweet after the salad. So I'm gonna have this. Welcome to dinner. Usually when I'm making a quick and easy dinner, it's either pasta with vegetables or stir fry tofu vegetables. Today I'm making a variation on that. I'm going to be making my garlic ramen stir fry. First things first, I just toss some oil I toss some tofu with some oil and salt. I have an extra half block for Dylan here per his request. So I'm going to get this in the oven because this is actually going to take the longest so it gets nice and crispy. Most nights I usually just make a simple veggie stir fry and some rice in the Instant Pot, but since I got these brown rice noodles on Thrive Market, I thought it would be fun to make this ramen stir fry. That being said, it does only take 20 minutes um, and it's very loose, flexible. It's more just like get this volume of veggies add your garlic, onion, and here's a little simple sauce. I do have a few extra veggies today. I already prepped them all. We've got bell pepper, mushroom, green onion, carrot, garlic, baby corn, because I love baby corn, and some snap peas, but you could really use anything. You could do broccoli and mushrooms. You could just do carrots and broccoli. You could just do broccoli. If you want it to be even simpler and more cost effective, you could just do that like mixed or fry bag of frozen vegetables. That is a very simple meal. And I'm using the gluten-free ramen noodles, but you could also just use like the instant ramen noodles as well. Basically, while our tofu is in the oven, we're going to bring a pot of water to boil, cook our noodles, stir fry our veggies, add the sauce, and combine everything, and serve. So now I'm gonna show you that. Got our finished stir fry and then over here our crispy tofu. Um, I kept things pretty simple tonight, like I said, just with salt and oil, but I have other recipes on my blog if you wanna add more flavor to it. But we just sort of put it on top of the ramen noodles and mix it in as we eat. Here's my finished bowl. A super easy way to get a ton of veggies in for a dinner that you could probably make in like 30 minutes or so. Also, we've got a, a hers and his situation. I think this is Dylan's lunch and dinner combined. So he's got his, his stir fry, which I doubled for him. And then he's got two types of tofu. This is just the super firm that I used. And then he also has, we didn't have enough. So he's got some extra firm. How you feel, Dylan? Do you have anything you want to say? I am so excited for this bowl of ramen. My camera lens isn't super wide angle, so it's just your face. Let me back up. A man and his ramen. <laughs> We're playing a board game. It's called Cascadia. The goal is to build the most diverse Pacific Northwest ecosystem. Um, I finished my dinner, so I'm going to have one of these mochi for dessert. We got these at our, um, like a local Asian market. It's a rice mochi and it's stuffed with red bean paste and this, uh, powder on top. It's actually toasted soybean powder. And I think there's like mugwort powder in it too, but it's like super chewy. It kind of tastes like powdered peanut butter and the filling is very delicious. We like them a lot. Hello, I'm kneeling on the ground because I don't feel like setting my camera up again. And it's late and I wanna go to bed. So that's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe got some meal inspiration or just saw how easy it can be to make delicious and satisfying vegan meals. Like I said, I've been vegan for eight years. I get my blood work checked. Everything's completely normal. 
I'm surviving, if not thriving at times. Um, and yeah, I just love showing other people how easy it can be, or even if you just wanna add a few more vegan or plant-based meals to your lifestyle, how easy that can be. So I hope you found this helpful and I have a ton of other recipes on my website if you want to check that out as well. Big thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can go to thrivemarket.com slash shoemaker to get 30% off of your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. If you can hear any rummaging in the background, I apologize. My husband is installing a bidet. <laughs> That's it from me. Uh, if you have any video suggestions or future content, leave that down below. Or if you just wanna send me a little note, you can leave a comment too. Um, but if not, I look forward to hopefully seeing you virtually in a future video. Bye.